Hello, I'm Liz Lumley of Finextra, and we're here at Notch's Payments Innovation Alliance in Barcelona. And today I'm speaking to John Hammond of Currency Cloud. Uh, and we were on a panel together talking about innovation in payments. Um, and the payment space has been, you know, according to some, you know, ripe for disruption over the past few years. And, and we've seen a lot of new entrants in this space. What is it about payments that, that has seen this sort of fintech explosion recently? Well, we, first of all, we, like, we don't like to talk about disruption, we like mm -hmm. to talk about innovation. Very good, very good. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, I think there's a couple of things that happened. I think the banking crisis was challenging for consumers as well as the banks themselves. And that created a gap that enabled companies to fill it. And payments was one of those things that was pretty opaque. Um, people didn't really know what was going in and out. There was kind of high charges. It was the area where banks were, were they weren't very transparent and it was very difficult to deal with them and the rates weren't very good for people. So what this allowed companies like us to do and other companies such as ourselves, whether they were dealing with consumers or businesses themselves, is to come and deliver a service that matched more the consumer's demand of that service. And because people felt like, okay, if there was a crisis in the banks, what's the risk associated with working with these guys if we always felt these guys are going to be around? And that just that, that moment was created for companies like us to pour into. Mm. But I mean, I, I find it interesting that um, there are a lot of money transfer companies around now and cross-border payments companies that are doing this with much lower fees in a much simpler way. Why, have it, why has this type of money transfer, bank, to, bank account to bank account money transfer with banks, been so complex and costly in the past? Um, if you think about an individual transaction, if one person wants to send money to a, another individual, the bank has this whole infrastructure to pay for, okay? And so they charge according to that, to that amount. And because people see the transfer of money as the cost associated with sending that money, not the rate at which I sell it, which is actually where the bank's making a lot of money, but also they're charging you 50 quid to move it between two points. That's, you know, you kind of swallow it because there's no alternative. But when there's an alternative, people feel differently. And what the fintech companies have been able to do is to aggregate all of these individual payments up and go back to the bank and say, look, I'm going to make loads of payments across your network. I need better rates and I need better um, charges for the payments themselves. And they can then pass that on to the consumer. So the consumer gets a significant reduction. The company themselves are making a markup and the bank gets their network used at the rate they want to. For the very largest customers get these incredible rates anyway, and really what's happening is the money senders and the fintech companies, or the payment companies, they're effectively acting like very large customers themselves. So um, I want to talk a little bit about Currency Cloud's growth. You know, what are your strategies for moving outside the Eurozone? So, um, <clears throat> so we already send money all around the world, 170 countries last year. Um, we already send money to America, so we're already sending money all around the place. The next challenge for us, and we're in the middle of it, is collecting money in the USA and then sending that money internationally. So uh, the US is a, it's a very large market. International payments is, as a percentage of the market, is smaller, but the market is so huge that it presents a, a huge opportunity for us. And we're helping companies over there become international, if you like, um, and a big part of what we play is help companies participate in the global economy and internationalize themselves. So the challenge over there is obviously compliance and licensing and regulation, and that's the, um, that's the process we're going through right now. And also sort of 50 different types of regulations as well. Yeah. yeah, they're broadly the same. One state has their own interpretation completely. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's just the, that's the environment. And part of, what we, part of what we're bringing to the market is that we're solving these headaches for people. So innovation isn't just about technology, innovation is about simplifying something that is complex and making it kind of a commercial model. So uh, what we've done to date is take the complexity of technology in banks and present simple APIs. Well, to that we can add taking the complexity of compliance in two massive zones, in the Eurozones uh, and in Europe through our FCA e-money regulation, if we can have the same in the US, we can start to simplify that for our customers who can then start to trade internationally through us.